Hi folks, it's Switchback. I am in the process of planning my next trip, and so I thought I would bring you guys along to see how I do that. I'm at the stage right now where I'm still figuring out exactly where I wanna go. My objective for this trip is to see some foliage. So I already Googled best foliage in California, and one of the places that came up was Yosemite. So right now I'm kind of exploring some ideas of where to go there. Ideally places I haven't already been. I've been to Yosemite several times, but a couple of those times have been in the winter when Tioga Road is closed. So I've never been to Tuolumne Meadows. So I'm just kind of exploring to see what's in that zone. Looking at backpacking in Yosemite right now. And you'll see I'm on the NPS website. This is gonna be the most official place to find anything. So you can see there's trail descriptions, trailhead information. My dog is super helpful. I'm gonna start with trail descriptions. So for this trip, I'm still figuring out exactly how many days we're gonna do. It's probably gonna be a minimum of three days, maximum of seven, I'm likely to do seven, but it's gonna be my wife and me. So I have to factor in her abilities, my abilities, what's fun for her, what's fun for me. So let's check out trail descriptions. With my wife, I would max out at maybe like five to seven miles per day. So you can see on the website here that they've got the park divided out into regions. So I think I'm gonna first check out Tuolumne Meadows, Tioga Road on the east side over here. Ireland and Evelyn Lake. I did kind of look at this a little bit. It crossed my mind to do clouds rest. We'll see. Of course, with a place like Yosemite, there are a lot of different options. It's a huge park. And I have <clears throat> my set of maps here that I'm also going to look through and kind of geek out over and kind of figure out maybe some areas that I'd wanna go. I am debating whether we wanna go somewhere where we can overlook the valley or if we wanna go somewhere a little bit more remote. Again, foliage is kind of what I'm looking for. This is gonna be like the second week of October. So it'll be on the early side of foliage, but hopefully we'll get to see some. Since I'm curious about Cloud's Rest and whether it would be a good fit with my mountain goat coming, I'm gonna go on all trails. And again, all trails is not gonna be your end all be all research for a trip. Just like any resource, it's a good place to get some ideas and to get some information, but it is not where I would suggest going for all of your information. I would not call anything here gospel by any means. One of my beefs with all trails as your way of looking for something like this, you can see, so the best trails in Yosemite National Park. I, I typed in Yosemite National Park. This is the screen that came up and it says all trails has 274 great hiking trails in Yosemite. That is a lot to go through. So again, this is not gonna be the way that I would look for most of the information that I wanna find. However, I am specifically wanting to look at Clouds Rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Clouds Rest. And I'm gonna make sure that I look for the right one. So for this first one here, that's not even the right Clouds Rest. But there are these ones that are all Yosemite National Park and there's obviously several, there's more than one. So I'm not gonna just take one of these as gospel. Let's see what happens when I click on this Clouds Rest Trail. I like to look at the map among one of the first things here. I'm gonna click on that. So it looks like this one is leaving from Tenaya Lake. So that's cool. That's kind of something I was hoping that would be a possibility for this. But I wanted to look at the trailhead to see where it enters. And you can see that there are all these other trails around that area. And so it would be feasible to make a loop out of it. I'm looking at this elevation profile here. So it tells me the grade with the percent grade. And so this is kind of a helpful tool to see like, okay, it goes to 24% there, evens out. I like that it goes up and down. 
It's not crazy. Like 20% grade here and there. That's a pretty steep grade, but it's, again, it's not ongoing. So that is definitely a possibility. And it would give us a really cool look over Yosemite Valley. One of the features I really do like about all trails is that you have all of these reviews. So, and these are, this is such a heavily trafficked trail that there are going to be current reviews, probably reviews posted every day, which is great because then you can see about water sources or if there's anything that you really need to know, sometimes people will put it in here. Not necessarily always and certainly can't count on it, but Sometimes I'll find things in here that I didn't think of before. A mix of flat ground, rock stairs, and scrambling. That's helpful. 60% exposed. So that's good to know. Need to make sure that we plan for sun hats, sunscreen. This one's talking about going up there for sunrise, which might be kind of neat. Given that it's about seven miles one way, what I might consider is where we could camp that's not too far from Clouds Rest that we could camp and then day hike the next morning up to the top of clouds rest so this super dry right now makes me curious about water sources one of the things that i would need to do before i do anything else really to go too far into this is look at the map um, and figure out where water crossings are or where there are water sources noted on the topo maps and then i would need to call the ranger station and find out if any of those are running if they're dry what the conditions are on that. At least with this being a really popular trail, the rangers probably are in the know about that. Interesting that this person said you can leave your backpack before you go on the spine. I would never leave my backpack somewhere in Yosemite because bears. And bears in Yosemite are uh, fearless to say the least. And they have no qualms about grabbing your backpack. <laughs> So it looks like on August 31st here, two running creeks and a pond for possible water filter if needed. So that's a month, you know, a month ago, but it tells me at least that there are probably some water sources, hopefully along the way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and look at that topo map. This is a set of maps of Yosemite that I bought a few years ago. And I'll tell you which parts we're looking at. So I'm looking at the Northeast there's Tanaya Lake. So let's see. Uh, so I'm actually going to need to go south of that. Let's go with excuse me, southeast. Perfect. I'm going to need southwest too, actually. <laughs> this is why we have the whole set. <laughs> Another thing I thought about doing on this trip was the rim trail that kind of goes along the north rim of the valley. We'll see. This is southwest. See, you are not the same. So there's where the John Muir Trail is. Ah, clouds rest right there. Sunrise Lakes, maybe. I do see that there is a camp along the John Muir Trail here at sunrise. So maybe. There's also one at Little Yosemite Valley here. Here's what I am looking at. So here's where I was saying Little Yosemite Valley summer only right there. And then here's Clouds Rest. And then Tanaya Lake is up here. So we'd be hiking that potentially. And maybe we could do like a loop here. We'll see. One of the things I really like on these maps in particular is that they show the mileage from one section to the other. So, or from one section to another. So that helps me to plan out like, okay, so this is 2.5, you know, what is it from the exact trailhead? Where would we be parked? Okay, we need to figure that part out still. But I can figure out the math if I add it all up here, so we've got the 2.5 plus 2.2 plus 1.8, etc. Anytime that you're planning backpacking in a place like Yosemite, it's good to have more than one plan in mind. And the reason I say that is because permits. 
and permits. Thankfully, it's October, not the high season, but it's still going to be busy. And so when I go to apply for the permits, I need to have a backup plan because we may not very well not get our first choice. This is where potentially doing the north rim might be a good way to go. I'm going into the screen for wilderness permits here and you can look for the availability of reservations for the trailhead. So I'm going to go ahead and check on that. It takes a second to redirect. So I promise I'm not a robot. View the report. So I'm going to check the trail report for the Tuolumne Meadows area here and the trailhead entry was at Tanaya Lake. Oh, it's not even there. That's nice. So what was the, this is why we have this. <laughs> See, I'm perfect at this. All right, number 19 was Sunrise Lakes. So let's see what Sunrise Lakes had to say. So see the permit notes here. You must follow the regulations. Bears have successfully obtained food from backpackers in this area on a regular basis, and then some. Use a bear canister, it is required. Camp at least 100 feet from any water source. In some places it's 200. Some places you're set up right on the water. Along the Tuolumne watershed, ensuring winter washing and waste is 300 feet from water. So that's important to know because that's even more than the regular leave no trace, 200 feet. So each date indicates a date of entry into the Yosemite wilderness. Where this says there's four spots available, this one says four spots available. Now I'm on the NPS website looking at the wilderness conditions update. So it's talking a lot about current smoke, hazy days, um, no wood fires are allowed below 8,000 feet and not allowed above 9,600 feet, as well as select areas in the park. I'm probably just gonna plan on not doing a fire because sometimes it can be kind of hard to decipher what is allowed, what isn't allowed. And I have learned in hindsight that a fire that I've had was actually not allowed. So I'm fortunate that I didn't get in any kind of trouble and that no issues happened, but it happens to the best of us. We all make mistakes. And we learn from them, like deciding not to build a fire anywhere if you're not 100% sure. From October 15th, overnight parking is not allowed anywhere along Tioga Road. So that impacts our backpacking here. And then it talks about how in fall, um, the bears are going into hyperphagia, loading up for the winter. All that much more important not to just leave our backpacks with anything scented in them, not to leave anything out of our uh, bear canisters, to absolutely take our bear canisters. I'm guessing that they might be closing Tioga Road on the 15th, I don't know. Well, as you can see, this is a time consuming process, which is why we're gonna be doing a long video about it. I have more research to do, we'll see. We'll see if Yosemite is going to happen. I have a couple of other ideas. If not, this will give me a good opportunity to show you kind of how I do my overall searches. I put in the permit this morning for Yosemite. We're going to try to do two nights doing clouds rest. We'll see if we get it. According to the last report, the permits were available. Fingers crossed that they are available still and that the fires hold out and don't interfere with our plans. We'll see. So I'm still coming up with backup plans in case, but right now I'm trying to figure out meals. When it comes to just me, I'm not super picky. Um, my wife is not as much into like the oatmeal. She doesn't, there's certain things that she's not real into. So I'm trying to figure out some ideas for her that are gonna be feasible on the trail. I've gotten so used to just dehydrated food and like rehydrating with water. I haven't actually taken my aluminum pot in a while on a backpacking trip. So I have to like get out of the mindset of only things I can rehydrate. I'm like, oh yeah, you can actually like make food. And especially now that we're getting into the fall and it's not gonna be 90 degrees where we're going. That means you can take salami, you can take some cheddar cheese, you can take eggs, you can take chocolate. You know, all these things that I haven't really been able to take for a few months because it's just been too darn hot. 
Well, I'm gonna keep searching here. At least I've got some dinner and lunch ideas. I think I've got breakfast nailed. We'll see. Um, and I'll keep you posted about whether we get the Yosemite permit and about our backup plan. Since in California, you need one or two backup plans. Good morning. So it was yesterday, I believe, that I applied for the permit to backpack up at Cloud's Rest. And I just got notification this morning that I got approved. So now I have to go on and actually make the reservation and the permit pay. There's a $15 payment. Um, but now we get to do two nights going to Cloud's Rest. It's exciting. So we're gonna camp at Sunrise Lakes and we'll just base camp it from there. So we'll hike out um, on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And uh, set up camp over at Sunrise Lakes. And then Thursday, we'll do a day hike out to Clouds Rest, come back to Sunrise Lakes, and then Friday morning, we'll hike out. This is exciting, yeah! For obvious reasons, I'm not including screen, um, screen grabs of all this. <laughs> What's my address? It's my credit card number. I've been watching the weather where we're going. So this coming Friday um, it is supposed to rain. Fingers crossed, because that would be wonderful for our water sources. And then um, it's supposed to be like maybe 60 during the day and somewhere around 40 at night. But of course, a lot can change in a week. So I'm gonna be watching that pretty closely. I also got an email from Yosemite saying, you know, there are afternoon thunderstorms sometimes. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye out on that as well. And given that knowledge, I'm going to plan on our hikes being earlier in the day so that we're set up and we can, I'm gonna take a tarp so that we can set up um, a safe space to be if that does in fact happen. Jiggity, 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 jiggity. So I believe at this point, um, I need to take this to Yosemite when I go. Yes, I have to go. It says, bring this confirmation with you to any open Yosemite wilderness permit station. And so I'm gonna need to make sure that I know what ones are open, where they are, what their hours are. That way I can go and pick it up before we actually hike out. So we can pick it up the day before or we can pick it up by 10 a.m. on the day that we hike out. So we have to let them know if it's gonna be after 10 a.m. that we're gonna be picking it up. So that's definitely important information to know. This is why it's so important that you read the emails if you're applying for permits. Ooh, sweet. This, in, this confirmation authorizes you to stay in any of the camp backpackers campgrounds one night before and one night after your trip. The cost is $6 per person per night. That's really helpful information because <laughs> we were trying to figure out where we're going to stay the night before so that we can hike out in the morning because um, we do live several hours away. We were talking about getting a hotel room uh, and we may still do that, but at least we have this option. That's really nice. It looks like there's a PDF that I'm going to need to print out. Wow, it even asks what color your pack is and what color your tent is. Any medical concerns? vehicle information, equipment, clothing, and food pile, ultra light, moderate, extra, like, <laughs> wow, your navigation style. I'm glad though that they are asking this information because I imagine that that's really helpful information if God forbid search and rescue ever did need to go in there and get someone because of course we all know that that happens. Oh, I see, this is something to leave with someone else it looks like. Yeah, so it looks like the wilderness itinerary thing is to leave with someone. It's pretty cool that they include that. It is really important to let someone know. And usually the person I let know is my wife and she'll be with me. <laughs> now that we know that we are going to Cloud's Rest, I'm gonna start doing all of the detailed research. Since we're gonna be camping at the lakes, um, it looks like there's good reliable camping at Sunrise Lakes. Uh, so we know that there's a reliable water source there as well. Um, and with it raining, this week, hopefully there will be more streams and that kind of thing, but I'm gonna have to research what's reliable, what we know we can count on. Um, I also wanna make sure that I have a good sense of exactly what the terrain looks like. Um, and so I'm gonna do a little bit of research online about Cloud's Rest, what the camping looks like. I'm gonna most likely bring our freestanding tent. Um, it's heavier, unfortunately, but it's a little bit bigger and it's gonna be a little bit easier with my wife there to stay in that one. So over seven miles, it's got a 17, almost 1800 foot game. That's not awful. 
Um, I know that the spine is the part that freaks everybody out, but it looks like it's pretty wide from what I've seen. Bring binoculars. Yeah. I have a feeling I'm going to be bringing my big pack on this one because <laughs> we're going to bring some comfort items on this one. Some luxuries. Uh, when, you know, when I take my wife, it's just a different trip, which is totally fine. And I enjoy it. It's just in a different way. Um, if I were going on my own, I'd probably be hiking longer days on this one, but that's okay. I'm going to bring my hammock. That was so nice on my last trip. I, <laughs> I know I said it then and I'm going to say it again. Um, I forgot how nice having a hammock is. So I wish I could sleep in one. I just unfortunately can't. Uh, I have a stomach sleeper. It just doesn't happen. So we'll bring a chair for my wife and we might even bring two chairs because we might it's just <laughs> this is going to be a situation for my larger pack and my by larger i mean 80 liters i hope i don't have it full. <laughs> uh i'm gonna have the heavier load of the two of us i know that much so we'll bring the binoculars so that we can enjoy the view because if you're going to go somewhere like clouds rest it does make sense to bring binoculars Hopefully the smoke will have cleared out a little bit. Hopefully that rain really helps out our firefighters out there. It looks like the trail that goes um, from Clouds Rest to Sunrise Lakes, because there's like a split off to go to the lakes where we'll camp. It looks like it's not steep, but rocky. So that's good to know. I'm debating if I'm gonna wear my boots because I'm gonna have a heavier pack or if I'm gonna wear my uh, trail runners. My wife and I both have trail runners with rock plates. So that helps a lot with that rocky terrain. There are a couple different parts of this trail. The first one is gentle, pretty flat, uh, just under two miles through the Tenaya Lake Valley. Part two is a torturous, or, uh, tortuous series of switchbacks covering a thousand feet of elevation, elevation of elevation gain in a mile. My wife will be thrilled. Good thing she's a mountain goat. And the elevation at Clouds Rest is just under ten thousand feet. So. Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna take some Diamox with us, but I don't think I'm gonna prep with it. So there's some research about Clouds Rest. And then let's take a look at Sunrise Lakes. So we're not doing the Sierra High Camp because it's actually closed this year because of COVID. So we'll be camping at the actual lakes, not at the, um, not at the Sunrise High Sierra Camp. A little bummed that we'll be missing all the wildflowers, but <laughs> we'll see. I'll be excited if I see any. <laughs> well, one of the things I need to do is grab the right maps for what we're doing. Uh, I hope I don't have to take this whole back. <laughs> Here we go. This is the one I needed. And luckily it's right here, so I don't even have to open up um, the map really. I can open it up a little bit. So here's the trailhead for us. And then we will camp here. This is the High Sierra camp that's closed. And then this is Clouds Rest down here. So we'll hike up here, probably stay at that third lake while we're there, and then do a little day hike over there and then backpack out. So they're up around 94, 9,500 feet. I may just ask when we get there if we're allowed to have fires because um, sometimes it can just be honestly really difficult to figure out um, just from online research. So the best resources will be talk talking to the ranger then. I do know that stoves are allowed and we will definitely be doing warm meals. It doesn't look like insects are going to be a big issue this time of year, but bears, especially in hyperphagia, this is, I mean, Yosemite bears are notoriously um, food aggressive and not afraid of people. So um, this time of year when they're gearing up for hibernation is when they're especially food aggressive. So, um, and bear canisters are for obvious reasons required. On this trip in particular, it will be especially crucial that we do not cook in camp. As far as backup um, trips, I haven't gotten that far yet. You know, with the fires here in California and the weather this time of year, it it is sketch. So I'm gonna take a look around and see what there is for a backup. Um, ideally still with the hope of seeing some foliage, but it may be one of those like, let's see what permits are available 
that we could get. Good morning. It is now Monday before our trip and um, October 11th. So we leave tomorrow for Lee Vining where we'll be staying for one night and then we will um, backpack out on Wednesday morning for two nights. So I've been following conditions closely. Unfortunately, the NPS website hasn't updated conditions in two weeks. So that's really not super helpful information at this point as far as like water sources and that kind of thing. The lakes are not seasonal, so um, at least we have water where we're gonna be camping. I don't know that there are any reliable water sources between camp and Cloud's Rest, so we'll haul what we need to, um, what we need to get through the day with us that whole day. And then as far as fire restrictions go here, it says um, no wood fires below 8,000 feet or above 9,600 feet and in select areas of the park, which um, Sunrise Lakes is not one of the select areas. But I called and left a message this morning for the ranger to verify whether or not um, fires are allowed at Sunrise Lakes this week. I also wanted to find out whether or not Tioga Road is going to be open because when I had checked it out before, um, it was showing closures and because of the weather reports this week. There are um, there was supposed to be potentially a storm on Friday. Today there's supposed to be a storm as well and we'll go into the weather here in a minute. Um, but thankfully at this point, it looks like Tioga Road is open. So that's good news. Now going into the weather a little bit, I've been following the weather forecasts. And so today is Columbus Day, AKA Indigenous Peoples Day, which is much rather how I would prefer to look at it. Um, so snow showers are likely, um, windy, cold, low around eight degrees tonight, um, with gusts as high as 50. I'm really grateful that we're not out there today. Um, so it looks like not a lot of uh, snow accumulation is expected less than half an inch. So that's good news. Um, and then, but if you look here, so Wednesday, the high is supposed to be 38, the low that night about 15. That'll be our first night there. Um, Thursday, high of 43, low 52, high around 50 on Friday. The good news with this is that the winds are not supposed to break about five miles per hour. Thank goodness. So it'll be a little bit easier to stay warm with that. But with that low of 15, I had to think about, okay, our gear. My wife has a 20 degree bag and I have two 15 degree bags. I have one that's a synthetic and then one that's um, down. So I'm gonna let her use my synthetic bag and um, we're gonna take our summer bags to throw over us like quilts. And both of us have nice, warm sleeping pads. Uh, mine has an R value of 5.4 and hers is something like 6.4 or 6.7 or something ridiculously high. And then we're gonna be in a double walled tent together and we're both gonna be wearing our thickest base layers, gloves or mittens. I have mittens, she has gloves. Uh, we have balaclavas that we're gonna wear and then our nice warm hats. So I think between all of that, we will be okay temperature wise. We also have to think about water freezing at that point. Um, we're each taking a water bladder and we're taking a Nalgene. So we will have to sleep with our Nalgenes in order for them to not freeze overnight. But we will also have to sleep with our electronics and our water filter, just kind of how it goes. So anytime that you're getting close to freezing, those need to go in your sleeping bag anyway. The next thing I had to think about was our food. So I, use this little spreadsheet here and I'll go into this more in another video at some point. Um, but I plan out all of our meals and what I do is I write down what we took and what we used and then what we had left. So, um, I also make notes of what we wished we'd had or what worked or what didn't and stuff like that. And I, I learn a lot this way. And it's also really nice to be able to refer back to this when I'm planning for the next trip. So this Lake Sonoma trip here, my wife was with me on that one. And so I was able to look at foods that she liked and what, what she didn't. I remember some of what worked and what like the little surprises and stuff like that. But it's really nice to be able to have this to refer back to. 
Um, and so like this is a different trip and I actually wrote what the meal plan was here, which was nice. Um, but that was not a trip that she was on. So it's a little bit different. So down here is where we are right now. So these are gonna be our meals. Um, we're gonna do breakfast burritos both mornings. Um, I'm bringing fresh eggs. I'm hoping that they'll be okay in the mornings because of it being so cold. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, things you learn along the way. Or we'll be having ramen for lunch and or for breakfast and uh, breakfast burritos for lunch, we'll see. <laughs> but these are our trail lunches. Um, and then I have these dinners planned. And along here I have some, these are a few of the snacks that I have listed, but I have some other ones in here as well. And then like drink flavoring, um, my coffee, some hot chocolate. Um, she's not a big hot chocolate fan. I have ramen packed as a couple of just kind of backups for things. So this will be our plan for what we have for food. I already have it all set up in the bear canister and like I have out in my little mesh bag what we'll be using for that first day, including our dinner, our lunches, snacks, but I made sure to leave room in the bear canister for the snacks in case we don't finish them because we won't. I've also been putting together um, my lighter pack, which um, if you look, my pack will not be light, but that's okay because I'm taking a hammock and a chair because we're gonna be at camp for a little while, although it may be too cold to even lay in the hammock, we'll see. Uh, we'll definitely be putting sleeping bags in there if we lay in that. And I have to take my heavier kitchen setup because um, we're gonna be cooking instead of just rehydrating. So I have to take that. And it's also a larger pot. I usually end up needing a larger pot when it's the two of us. So um, even if I was just rehydrating, I'd probably still need to take the setup I am. I'm also, um, I, so when you're at elevation and it's cold, those are both risk factors for your stove failing. And so I've had this MSR pocket rocket for like six, seven years now, and I really like it, but I wanted to have a backup in case. So I got the new pocket rocket deluxe and I played with that yesterday a little bit to make sure that I could figure it out. Cause you should always test new gear before you're taking it out on the trail. So we did that. Um, and I'm gonna keep that in its little travel bag to keep it protected. But in addition to everything else I talked about with the sleeping bags and all that, we also are gonna be using sleeping bag liners. So I already have one and I bought my wife one yesterday. I have an emergency blanket that I've had for a long time, but I also bought a second one for her to carry. And then if somehow we're still cold with all of that good stuff, we can put those over ourselves. So you'll see here I have the Sawyer squeeze and the bladders and all that good stuff because we have a, a dirty water bladder and a uh, clean water bladder and I always take Aquamira as a backup. One of the things that I didn't put on my letter pack here is what my wife will be carrying and what I will be carrying. So like we're both going to be carrying one of these summer bags. Um, she has a different pillow and a different sleeping bag and all that good stuff. But I have the whole tent on here and I actually break it down. You can see I break everything down on here so that I can really look at what each item is gonna be in case I don't take everything. Like I have the steaks in the separate um, category, but I'm not even gonna take steaks because I can usually find rocks that I can use to um, guy out the vestibules on this tent. She might carry the tent and I might carry the fly. We'll figure it out. And I'm gonna take binoculars, which I wouldn't normally take, but when you go to Cloud's Rest, you need to take binoculars. Um, taking my super huge heavy pack, um, which is about twice the weight of my normal pack, but it's designed to carry a heavier load like this. And I need the room just with all the extra gear that we're gonna have. It's a great pack. I love the Diva. Um, it comes in a 60, a 70 and an 80 liter. And this is something that I, I know I've mentioned in my mistakes video um, that I bought an 80 liter pack, but, and I probably would be fine on this one with like a 70 liter, but I, um, I do like the extra volume for a trip like this. I've actually packed everything for the most part, um, except for the things that I would use on a daily basis. I pack our overnight bags also for Tuesday night. I'll double check all the food again, even though I've already double checked it once or twice already. I think that's about it. I'll be keeping an eye on the weather every day. I've been watching this over the weekend and I'm grateful that I did because one report said that it was supposed to be like 30 at night and then I looked at this and it's supposed to be 15 and I would much rather prepare for 15 than for 30 because I would hate to be up there and it be 15 when I'm planned for 30.
Good morning from the road. So today is Tuesday. It's the first day of our trip. And according to the NPS website, Tioga Road is closed because of snow yesterday. Um, I called and left a message with the ranger to find out if there's any word on it opening tomorrow. Here's hoping. We're still going to go pick up our permit and um, Big Oak Flat Information Center and we'll figure it out from there. At this point, if we can't go backpacking, then we'll find some kind of like first come first serve campground or do something like that. We've got all of our cold weather gear. We'll figure something out. There's plenty to do in, in the Eastern Sierra. So uh, since we're gonna be in Levining tonight, we'll stay near Mono Lake or do something. There's plenty to do. Tioga Road open, here's hoping. Here's the pass, babe. I hope you've enjoyed watching how I plan this trip to Yosemite and next I will have a video about how our trip went and how many curveballs were thrown at us along the way. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share this with your friends and comment below any tips that you have about planning for a backpacking trip and I'll look forward to seeing you in my video with the trip report. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.